Hey guys, welcome back to Digital Screeny channel on YouTube and I hope you watched the previous video, the one just before this video, because I introduced the topic of open slide and uh, we used open slide to open a whole slide image. And uh, for visualization purposes, we resized it to smaller resolutions. And we also learned about how we can look at various levels within that whole slide image, meaning different resolutions that are stored uh, as part of that whole slide image and how we can work with different levels. And finally, we ended that video by talking about how we can divide this large image into smaller tiles of a specific size. In fact, uh, we did save 256 by 256 resolution tiles into our local drive. So this video, you can think of this as an extension of that where I would like to show you while you're saving these as tiles, you can perform some sort of a processing operations. And as an example, I chose this application of normalizing your HND stained image. Why normalizing? Because if you just Google search for HND stain, uh, staining and look at all the images, they vary by who mixed these uh, these stains and how thick is your tissue and a whole bunch of other parameters. I don't have to teach you guys who are experts at prepa uh, preparing these. Uh, I, I assume you're watching this because you know something about HND staining and you know something about uh, whole slide images, but you probably understand how there is a, such a big variation in uh, in in your contrast and color and gray, uh, you know color levels, so normalization always helps for any downstream processing. So that's why I chose these applications. So here I would like to show you uh, the. In fact, I covered this a long time ago. This specific topic. So I'm not going to talk too much about the actual approach of how we are normalizing these images. Although I'll refer you to a nice useful paper that my code is based on. So the point here is we are trying to extract a tile or every tile here uh, from this large image. And while saving this tile locally, we're going to process it by normalizing it and also separating the H and the EOSIN components uh, uh, digitally, of course, and uh, saving these as separate entities. Now you can use this H image, for example, to do some sort of a nuclei size analysis. Uh, and you can, you can use unit segmentation, for example, to segment individual nuclei and then go ahead and do your distribution and density analysis or whatever you would like to do as a downstream uh, analysis. Okay, so the goal uh, is loading a large whole slide image, extracting individual tiles, doing some sort of a processing and saving these. What I'm not going to cover, if you are waiting for me to do that, what I'm not going to cover in this video is, okay, you save all these tiles, putting them back into a nice large whole slide image format, because you cannot just write into any whole slide image format. Of course, you can build the pyramid structure and all that, but that's a different discussion. I don't want to include that as part of this. So this is the goal, and let's go ahead and jump into the code now. And uh, as I mentioned, I am going to do the normalization and separation of your both uh, H and E signals digitally. And that entire work is based upon this paper and based on their MATLAB code, which I, uh, you know, will, which I'll show you in Python, a Python version. But of course, all credit goes to these guys when it comes to coming up with this technique of converting, of normalizing. Uh, these images. And uh, you can go through this paper. Again, I covered this in one of my previous videos. I'll leave the link down here so you can go back and watch that tutorial where I talked about this a little bit more in detail, but the paper does an obviously a much better job of describing their own method. So this is the process. And of course, it's based upon these steps. As you can see, we are going to convert our RGB image into our OD image, which they described up here. If you're curious about what that OD is, optical density image. And then there is a uh, normalization intensity that you need to provide. For example, in our 8-bit image, we go from 0 to 255. So you can say, okay, my brightest pixel or normalization, uh, normalizing uh, intensity can be 240 or 245 or something. So that is something you can uh, provide as an input. But again, read the paper to understand things a little bit better. What, what is beta? What is alpha? Uh, we, we are going to use what they proposed in the paper of alpha equals to 1, beta equals to 0 0.15, and follow these steps exactly as they described. OK, so with that information, let's jump into the code. OK, let's go ahead and clear out the screen. And any variables? Nothing. OK, let's start from scratch here. Again, this, uh, sorry, 
let's save it okay so this slide uh sorry this code is from uh, the previous video again i opened it to show you that okay you uh, to install this open slide library go ahead and pip install open slide python and then go to this location and download the windows binary if you're working on windows and store them somewhere and in case you get some error go ahead and uh, add this to your path again i covered this in the last video so let's not spend too much time talking about it now okay so now let's jump into how we can use this uh, approach Open, uh, basically using open slide and converting that into tiles using our deep zoom generator and then uh, uh, and then normalize each image this I anticipate to be shorter video uh, but we'll see how long it gets eventually okay so when it comes to normalize H and E I covered this as part of my video number 122 so please go ahead and check that out if you haven't uh, watched that before and this is exactly the same code I have used from this video so I left all the notes and everything as is uh, including the steps and then the steps down here so I created a function called norm HNE and it takes these inputs obviously the original image the input image that you would like to normalize and IO like I already mentioned the intensity I I use 240 it works for this image and alpha equals to 1 beta equals to 0.15 the same same numbers I mean the same uh, values provided uh, as provided in the original paper and same everything as provided in the original paper so if you want you can experiment with these uh, by changing these anyway what does this give out it gives me the normalized image the h image and the e image these three things so i have this function in a file i'd like to apply this to every image in my whole slide image so now let's get to that part again this is very straightforward especially if you watch my previous video you know where we are get, uh, getting to right now so uh, and by the way I mentioned that I'm not gonna put everything together into a image pyramid but if you are curious about that go ahead and uh, install pyvips p y v i p s that's a good library I so for some reason I'm not able to install that on my uh, on my uh, uh, spider right here it's giving me some uh, C++ compiling error that I have to figure out and if I figure out and if I manage to do something I'll, I'll uh, record a video but as of today I uh, this is this is what I'm going to show you and uh, I do not want to include any of those I have other dependencies on this system I don't want to touch those so I'm a bit careful in terms of what I'm installing on it when it comes to Python that's fine but when it comes to C++ and others I am a bit uh, wary of okay let me let me see if uh, that's actually needed or not anyway I'm just giving you some reasons in terms of why I'm not covering that but you should that shouldn't stop you from uh, experimenting this this is the library that you want to uh, try out if you want to build a pyramid image back together okay now let's get into open slide so let's go ahead and import open slide uh, pillow numpy matplotlib and tiff file uh, tiff file again to uh, handle tiff if you want to write your images as tiff uh, of course this is a great library to do that if you are using scikit image you can also save these images as tiffs if you want uh, of course any library you can use to save as png jpeg uh, but uh, tiff uh, scikit image can do that but that's because it uses uh, tiff file in the back end i believe okay so we imported the libraries and now let's go ahead and load our whole slide image and this is the one in svs format so i believe the vendor here is apero but that shouldn't matter open slide can le can read images in many formats like i mentioned earlier here just a quick note so you guys know so all of these formats it can definitely read so i'm using this svs format which is the most common whole slide image format okay so now let's get down and where are we yeah so we did these lines and now let's use our open slide to point towards whatever the SVS file or the whole slide image file and let's capture that as a variable right there and again we are not loading the entire image if we can then there's no point of using open slide right because if we can load the entire large image then we may as well manipulate that image because we cannot fit all of that into our memory we are using our open slide library to read this as an object and then extract relevant information from this object 
So it can tap into your local drive wherever this SVS file is stored and then extract the relevant information. So, so one such relevant information is the slide properties. Again, we looked at that in the last video. So let's directly jump into it then. So from my normalized HNE, right? This is the one that I created to normalize our HNE images. I'm going to import my norm HNE uh, uh, function. So let us do that. So import norm HNE. So let's run it. There you go. So that part of the code is loaded right now, which means it's ready for me uh, uh, for us to use it. OK, so let's test this on a smaller region and then let's automate it onto every tile. So first of all, let's go ahead and uh, again, if you remember from the last video, read underscore region. So slide dot read underscore region reads that specific part. And there are three things that you need to provide. One is the top left pixel where to draw that box to extract that information. So top left pixel in my last video, we used that as zero zero, which is the top left. So in this uh, in the, right now, I'm just pointing it to 16,000 by 16,000. Remember our input image, our SVS image is about 32K by 38K or something of that sort. And by putting 16,000 by 16,000 pixel position, we are picking something somewhere around in the middle. Okay, I wanna extract a small patch in the middle. And from where? From my level zero image. Again, in this case, my SVS file has three levels. Level zero with the full pixel resolution, 32 by 34 or whatever. And the next level, in fact, uh, if you haven't watched my last video, this could be somewhat uh, useful information, which is uh, the objective power slide dimensions right there. OK, let's go ahead and print the slide dimensions. My image is 32K by 38.4K. So that's the image size. Now you understand 16,000 by 16,000 is somewhere in the middle of this image. And how does this image looks like? Uh, look like looks like uh, I'm downscaling that into 600 by 600 size image so we can have a quick look. So our patch will come somewhere from this region, somewhere in the middle. OK. Uh, and uh, how many levels do we have? So number of levels in this specific image, let's go ahead and do that so you can see. Number of levels are three. Again, this is a pyramid type of image. You have like a full resolution image and then somewhat in the middle, somewhat smaller, somewhat smaller and so on. But we have three levels and each level, the dimensions are 32K by 38 and a half, 8K by 9.6, 2K by 2.4. So basically from here to here, it went down by four times. And from here to here, it went down by 16 times, basically. Okay, now that we understand the file, let's get back to where we were. So from my level zero, which is this resolution, so that from the entire large resolution image, extract a patch of size 1024 by 1024 with the top left being centered at that position. That's all this is. So when I run this, I should get a smaller region image, a smaller region image of 1024 by 1024. And if you look at the mode, the mode of this image is RGBA. So this is not just RGB image, it also has the alpha channel associated with that, which in our case, let's say that's useless. So let's go ahead and convert our image into RGB. So let's do that. Again, this is a pillow image. This is not a NumPy array yet. We'll convert that into NumPy. So first, let's get only RGB channels and now convert that into NumPy, because now that it's RGB. So let's go ahead and convert that into NumPy. And there you go. So now I have a smaller region NP right there with 1024 by 1024 by three. And this is an unsigned integer eight, and as you can, which means our pixel values go from zero to 255. OK, so far so good. Let's go ahead and have a quick look at this specific patch. So there you go. So this is the patch I'm working with. And this is at the native resolution now. We did not bin it down. We are actually working with our level zero image, which is our entire 32K by 38K image. We just extracted 1K by 1K patch from that. OK, so we haven't binned or anything. So this is how the image looks like at native resolution. So now let's go ahead and apply our norm HNE, right? That's the function that we defined right there. And it takes these four arguments. One is actual input image. 
are IO, alpha, and beta. So let's go ahead and supply those. So my input image is going to be my smaller region in the NumPy format, and IO, alpha, and beta I'm gonna leave as is. And what is it going to give out? Give us as output three things, normalized image, H image, and E image. So let's go ahead and extract those. And now this part just plots all that stuff into a nice plot that we can clearly visualize. Okay, there you go, that's my input image. That's the normalized image, and this is the H part of it, and this is the Eosin part of it, okay? So, it's working great for our 1K by 1K image. So now you get an idea of exactly what to expect with this H and E normalization approach. Now let's go ahead and automate this to every tile, uh, each tile at a resolution, uh, at a size of 256 by 256 through our entire uh, through our entire uh, uh, images, you know, or the tiles. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So first of all, uh, one thing we need to take care of, I mean, I already saved in my previous exercise, I actually saved a whole bunch of, let me go back. And here you can see in, under images, I saved it under save tiles and original tiles right there. So I did save, let's go ahead and open this up. All of these, at least I stopped after a while, so I only have 520 images, which is okay for now for the demonstration purposes. So you can see that most of the 256 by 256 patches are kind of blank, there is nothing. And the way the code is written, it throws an error, like saying eigenvectors did not converge or something. We'll see that in a second. Uh, it doesn't know what to do with these blank because there is no change in intensity right there. It's all like basically very, pretty much the same intensity. So our code does not work with these and sometimes it works on this one, but the result looks weird. It's designed to work on images that look at least like this or this or this or this and uh, definitely works on images where uh, it fills the entire scene. So now we have to make a decision in terms of what do we do with these blank blank ones? Maybe we can just not do anything, just skip those and only work on the ones where we have uh, more information, not even these ones, but something that has a little bit more information, somewhat like these, yeah, somewhat like these. So that's the approach I'm thinking about. So for those, what I did was I took these images and I separated them as uh, good and partial, like blanks. I put a whole bunch of these blanks in the blank, as you can see, and I put some uh, called partial, and these are the ones where I don't have a lot of stuff going on uh, because these will be probably useless for what I'm trying to achieve. And also, of course, the ones that say good, of course, partial ones are also good, like it should cover at least some part of it, yeah? Why did I do this? Well, now, I would like to find the mean and the standard deviation of each of these type of uh, you know tiles so I can use that value to sort my images while I'm doing this processing. Again, this is completely what I plan on doing with these images. Of course, your, your method may be uh, completely different, right? So uh, just so you understand the code, this is exactly what I've done. Okay, so now let's go ahead. Uh, I, I would like to show you what the issue is. First of all, let's read a blank image. So I'm going to read one of the images uh, using my TIFF file library. So let's go ahead and read one of the blank images and uh, no point in displaying it. You know it's blank because I, I'm reading it from my blank directory. Now let's go ahead and apply my normalized H and E staining. And if you see, it says eigenvalues did not converge. That's because there is nothing there. It's just a blank image. So this is why I'd like to find a way of processing or not processing them or sorting them aside. So that's why I wrote this extra function down here that just finds the mean and standard deviation uh, in the pixel value within a given tile. Okay, so uh, when I run this again, uh, you'll see that when we do when we do our next step. But all it's doing is basically converting your tile into a NumPy array. Once it's in a NumPy array, you know how to find average value, right? It's just uh, where is it? Uh, image dot mean. I mean your NumPy array dot mean and NumPy array dot std gives you the standard deviation. And I just captured that into a into a uh, an array, and I took the average value of the array. So I get like, okay, of all my blank images, this is the mean pixel value, and this is the standard deviation. Of all the partial images, this is it, and so on. Okay, now is uh, the time for us to go ahead and read through 
our original tiles, which is, uh, you know, our, all of our tiles, and also the blank ones, the partial ones, and the good ones. Just so we can get the blank, partial, and good. Uh, we don't even need to read the original tiles right there. We just need these three. So let's use glob to go through these images. So let's first of all capture, uh, sorry, this is, this is needed because that's an impo, uh, input down here. So this is just, uh, I, I thought I was reading, but this is just a uh, uh, directory name there. So let's go ahead and read these. And you should see that after this, we have blank image list. These are all the blank images. And then similarly, we have our partial image and good image list. Now that we have those, let's go ahead and it takes image list as input, the way I have written this, to find the mean and pixel values. So it's reading one image after the other, getting these and giving me the average. So basically, when I run these three lines, I should get a printout that looks like this in the bottom. So now it's reading all the images and just printing out, calculating the mean average right there. So we, can, we may as well look at it here, it's easy to see. So you can see that the average pixel value for all, uh, I should have, I should have basically mentioned for all blank images here, right? So this is, sorry about that, for all blank images, pixel value for all blank images. And uh, the next one is for all partial, makes it easy for us to read for all partial and for all good ones, yeah? Uh, for all good images and for all good images. Now you can clearly see that the pixel value average is about 245, very high for the blank image and the uh, the standard deviation is only one like <laughs> it's so basically the pixel value here is going between 240 uh, you know 3 and 245 or 246 that's it so you know that okay these are all blank images so we can use this as a criteria to find out when we read an image if it's a blank or a non blank basically that's what i'm trying to do is it a blank or a non blank image so i'm using this as metrics and if you really want to avoid even the partial images, the mean value is still pretty close to 245, right? It's mostly blank. Uh, and the standard deviation changes a little bit because you have some extra stuff. So I'm going to combine these two and then uh, define, uh, define a criteria. So for the next one, the mean value is much lower than 244, still high, like 208. And the standard deviation is pretty high. So remember this when we get down to the next stage. Okay, now to read individual tiles, I'm doing exactly what I have done in the last video, which is use deep zoom generator uh, and then create a tiles object. So deep zoom generator applied on your slide with a tile size of 256 and no overlap. You can add overlap if you want. And let's go ahead and do this. And when you do that, the tiles uh, object is created. And now you can find out various things like how many levels are in our tiles object. As we saw in our last video, there should be 17. Remember, in our slide object, there are all three different levels. Tiles is a completely new object, okay? And this tiles object has 17 levels. What are these levels? These levels are all, all the way down to one by one pixel to 32,000 by 38,474 uh, pixels. So this is different levels. Obviously for, uh, for, uh, for us, we have decided to work with the largest image. So we have decided to work with the last one with a ID of 16, right? So we have 17 levels. So if I, our ID equals to 16, then we are referring to this one. So we're going to work with our ID equals to 16 in a minute. Okay, so how many columns and rows do we have in our level tiles 16? Let's go ahead and do that. We have 126 columns, and when it comes to rows, 151. So we have 126 by 151. So for each of these, 126 by 151, we have to read each one and process them. That's what we are doing down here. But first, let's go ahead and provide the appropriate directory names where the images are going to be read and where the images are going to be stored. So. This is where we are going to read the images from, and this is where we are going to store the images into. So for each of these rows, and for each of these columns, go ahead and give a title of the row and column name so we can track them, and then go ahead and get the tile. And do you know, obviously, if you watched the last video, you know how to do this, my tiles object dot get tile, which gives us that specific tile, and from level number 16, so it knows that, okay, go look for this image, 
And within this image, look at that column and that row, because in this image, we know that it has 126 by how many, 151. So for 126 by 151, start with 00, 01, 02, so on, all the way to 126 by 151, go ahead and get the tile. Once you get the tile, go ahead and convert that into RGB because we know that these are going to be RGBA with the alpha channel. Convert that to RGB and convert that to a NumPy array. Once it's converted to NumPy array, first of all, save that tile into a new directory. So if I go back here, here I have original tiles. It's going to overwrite these ones. That's okay. And it's going to save the normalized ones in normalized tiles, H1 in here and E here. Right now they're all blanks, we have nothing there. Hopefully they'll be filled with our normalized images and all that in a minute. Now comes this condition, if my tile that I just extracted, if the mean of that is less than 230, and if the standard deviation is greater than 15, why 230 and 15, if I go back, this one, 232-ish or something, right? So if it is less than 230, that means it is probably a good tile, good image. And if the standard deviation is above 10, it's probably a good image. So that's exactly what I'm giving here. In fact, I put 15 to be a bit even more conservative. Say, if the mean is less than this and if the standard deviation is greater than 15, do the following. Basically, print that, okay, I'm processing this tile and apply my norm H and E, and this is my tile, and this part, you know. And once it's done, go ahead and save my norm image into the norm folder, H image to the H, and E image to the E. If it's not this condition, then say, not processing this tile. Move on, okay? So that's what we are doing in this for loop, and now we should see a couple of print things going on here. It says not processing, not processing, and then processing tile 16, zero. And these ones, it's not processing, obviously, because they're blanks. It's processing some of these, it's not processing these. And if I actually, this will go on for a little while because we have a lot of, oh, sorry, because we have a lot of tiles. So if I go to normalize tile, now you should see all the tiles that are actually normalized right there. Yeah? And if I go back to my H, let's stop this. We don't need to prove with every one of these images. We have a lot of those. Now, if I go to the H tiles, you can see these are all the, uh, H signal. I don't know why this one failed. Now I have to go back and check what happened here. But you can see how your images are all ready if you want to do nuclei counting, for example, in each of these tiles. That's ready. And I don't know why you would use the E signal, but it's still there if you want to do something with this. And if you only want to work with normalized tiles, go ahead and work with normalized tiles, whether you want to use these for deep learning or some something else. Okay, so some of these tiles, I have to load individual tiles to see exactly what's going on, why this thing failed. Maybe it requires different parameters or something, but as you can see, most of this, it's, it's doing an amazing job right there. Okay, so I think that uh, brings us to the end. And as uh, as you can see here, I added a note saying, hey, you can try using PyWips to create an image pyramid from the stored tiles to create this pyramid back if you want. And I'll let you explore that. And again, these, these libraries have very good documentation, so you should be able to easily uh, navigate through, but I just want to make sure you're aware of these libraries. And if there are any installation issues, I'll definitely let you know, like obviously for PyWips, I have uh, some installation is issue and I haven't managed to uh, completely install that, but hopefully someday I'll, uh, I'll get to cover that part also. So for now, uh, let me end this video and I really hope that you found this to be useful and uh, please like this video if you if you like this type of content and of course i request you to subscribe to my channel thank you guys